Hey guys, Garrett here, and most of you are going to paint a room at some point in your life, or you're probably going to do quite a few of them. Well, you need to know what you're doing, and that's what this video is going to be about. This is all about rolling paint, just like the pros do. We'll start off going through all the different materials as well as tools that you're going to need to be able to do this. So first thing, blue painter's tape. Make sure you get some of that. Next, you wanna get some sort of a roller. Get the most expensive roller that you can possibly find, and there's a reason for this. This is a really cheap roller. It probably costs $4 to get, and you'll notice it has a wire frame, and it has, of course, you know, metal arm that's really thin, and a grip that is pretty darn flimsy. So, what makes a good one Good. Well, you probably want to get something like this. This where the roller goes. It's actually a plastic area, and it's odd to say that I'd like it to be a plastic area rather than a metal frame like this one. The arm on this is about twice the thickness as what the other one is, so it's a lot less likely. It's almost impossible to bend this thing as you're rolling. And this handle right here is really thick, and the threads within it are also really, really good. So you'll notice whenever you use a uh, flimsy one like this, it'll bend all over, especially if you're using some sort of a, an extension with it. However, if you get a good one like this, it's not gonna bend or move at all where that thread engagement is and the threads themselves are a heck of a lot thicker and heavier duty. This is a great place to spend some actual money. So like I said, this cheap one's probably about four bucks. This nice one is about 12 bucks. Get the $12 one. Even if you think you're only gonna do one room, most likely you're probably gonna end up doing more than that. So buy these tools, you won't have to replace them later on. Next, let's talk about the roller covers themselves. So there's two things to know about these. There's a knit and a woven. Usually the white ones are gonna be woven and the colored ones are going to be knit. My suggestion is to go with the woven. Again, it costs a little bit more money, but as you run your fingers and your hands down it, you're not gonna have any lint come off of this one. Whereas the knit, you're probably gonna have some lint come off of it. The cheaper you get, the more lint is gonna come off of it and get into your paint on your walls and show up. It's just a bad deal. Get the woven ones, spend the extra money again. When you're looking at your roller covers, you also wanna think about the thickness of the nap. That's what this is called right here. The thickness between this little edge right here and the outside of the fabric itself. That's called the nap. Now the vast majority of them are going to be 3 8 inch nap. And that is for a smooth wall. But the more textured your wall is, the heavier the nap you need to be able to get that paint into those little crevices. So uh, if you have a pretty textured wall, you may need a half inch nap or you may need a three quarter inch nap. So the nap needs to be specific to the wall that you're painting. All of my walls were smooth walls and therefore a 3 8 inch nap gave me the best finish. Next would be extensions and you can get a really long one like this. I have used this quite a lot, but it is worthless in an area like a bathroom or a hallway or something like that that's relatively small that you just can't fit in. You need an adjustable one or you need a whole bunch of fixed ones that are a fixed length just a bunch of different links. But I would much rather say, get one of these adjustable ones. This one is Mr. Long Arm Smart Lock. And so it's a two foot and it can extend out to a four foot. I've had great success with this. Plus I like it because this right here is detachable. So when I put these two together, of course I spin that on until it bottoms out. But as I'm painting or if I get into a place where uh, this is just too long for me, it's got a little button right here. You just push that button and it's a quick release. Or I can put it right back in place and I'm ready to go again. It's a really nice feature. I find it very, very handy. Again, a high quality extension that is adjustable is definitely the way to go. Check out the links down in the description. Next, let's talk about the paint trays. Well, a pro is many times gonna use an actual screen like this. You're gonna have a bucket, they'll set this screen in there, pour some paint in it, and then roll off of this. But this video is made for the beginner or the intermediate person, and realistically, I don't even use this very often. I use either a metal paint tray like this, 
or a plastic one like this. And there are differences between the two. The metal one, it's, it's a good pan, but the middle right here can actually flex back and forth, which can be uneven coverage on your roller whenever you are filling your roller. Uh, it works, but, but realistically, I like these a lot better. They are just stiffer, they don't flex at all, and please disregard all the paint that is on this one. Every time I use one of these things, I clean it. Well, somehow this one didn't get cleaned. So pro tip here, clean your pan every single time that you use it. If you don't clean your pan, it's very likely that you're gonna get little chips or little pieces of paint come out of that pan and get right into your wall. And you can see how clean this pan is. I just use this on an entire interior of a house and I cleaned it every single time. All of the products that I'm showing you are available at your home store, whether it's Lowe's, Menards, Home Depot, even Ace, but you can also get them from Amazon. I've left a bunch of links down in the description. These are the ones that I would recommend. Before you ever put any paint on your walls, you most likely did a little bit of wall repair. Well, if you did, you have mud anywhere, you need to put some sort of a drywall primer on there, a PVA primer sealer. You always want to prime any repair that you have done. Don't skip this step. When it comes to paint, I always use Sherwin-Williams. I'm using the contractor grade Promar 200. Your next step is going to be to prep your workspace. You wanna make sure to put something down on your floor, especially if you don't wanna get any paint on it. I don't recommend plastic because the paint that gets on it can be actually really slick and it can get all over your shoes. I recommend some sort of a cloth drop cloth. It'll stay in place a lot easier and it won't move around on you. Next step is to remove all of your your switch and wall covers and then tape those. As you can see with this outlet, we just grab a two to three inch piece of painter's tape and tape it right along the top of that outlet, just creating a tent. You don't have to do the whole thing, just that top piece. But remember, whenever you put this on, that outlet is live and you do not wanna shock yourself, so do not be shoving your fingers into that area. Same thing with switches, just a little two inch piece of tape draped right over the top of it. I suggest doing this with the uh, switch in the down position tape it and then you can move that switch up and down without the tape coming off. But again, you don't have to tape off the whole thing. You can just put a little tent layer over it. And if you have cable outlets that you cannot take off, again, just a little piece of tape tinting over it. When it comes to your baseboards, you do have some options here. You can tint tape over that as well. Just run a continuous piece of tape over it or you can have something that you just set on top of that baseboard. I ended up having some leftover pieces of siding, so I just cut them down into manageable size pieces, set it right on top of that baseboard, and it covered it perfectly. And the main reason that you wanna tint all of these things is you want to prevent the splatter from happening. You may not realize it, but unless you're going really slow, you are always splattering paint out whenever you are rolling with a roller. So that's the whole purpose of the tape, as well as the covers, is to prevent the splatter from hitting all of that stuff. You want this to be a professional looking job. You don't want a bunch of paint splatter on your outlets or your switches or your baseboards. Just cover them and you can do it quickly just like I showed. Now it is time to paint. You've already cut in all of your edges and it is time to roll. So now you load up your roller and it's time to paint those walls but you do not want to start at the edge or at the top or at the bottom. You actually want to offset just a little bit. Six to eight inches is good enough. And the reason for this is your roller cover is very full of paint. You don't want to feather in those cut in areas until your paint roller has exhausted a good portion of its paint. Otherwise, you're going to push a bunch of paint up into that area and it's going to be a very definite line that happens. And that's why I always work from the right to the left. I start with the heavy roll on the right hand, go left, and then whenever I do the return trip, basically the second roll over that same paint, I go all the way to the top to the bottom, and then to that right-hand side. If you do this, you won't have those distinct edges whenever you're painting. Also notice whenever I get near my edges, I will tilt the roller, clear out the edges, the edge paint that's accumulated at the edge of my roller, and then roll over it again. 
folks make a lot of mistakes with this. They don't do that or they push too hard on their roller. And of course, anytime that you push really hard on your roller, you are pushing that paint that's in the roller to the far edges. But if you don't back roll those edges or feather them in, you're gonna leave a distinct line, a distinct high spot that's gonna dry high and you're gonna have all kinds of lines on your wall. So my suggestion is to clear out those edges by tilting your roller at an angle, running it up and down, getting that excess paint off of it and then re-rolling the area. You'll end up with a very nice transition if you do this. Whenever you're looking at your roller, you have the arm on the one side. Well, you have to remember whenever you're painting, you're going to naturally put more pressure on this left side. So you have to compensate for that by twisting a little bit whenever you are painting on your walls. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very distinct line of paint that comes out of this side. And if you don't roll it right, it's going to be noticeable. And remember as you are rolling, you want light to medium pressure on that roller. And if it feels like you're running out of paint, don't push harder to get more paint out of that roller. You're probably gonna make lines. So just reload your roller with paint and continue on. A little practice with this is all it takes. You get a feel for it very quickly, especially if you follow the steps that I just told you. Another pro tip for you, always do two coats. Never, ever, ever just do one. It's almost impossible to get a perfect first coat. And you may think you get perfect coverage, but you'll see little areas after it dries, just like this, where the uh, base paint pops right through. So you should always do a second coat. And here you can see, you know, one coat of cut in. It also needs a second coat. As you can see here, there's a sheen difference between where, say, a mud spot was versus not. That's again why you need a second coat. And that sheen can be very, very prominent, especially where you overlap your roller strokes. So again, that second coat gets that sheen very consistent all the way across the wall, and that's exactly what you want. I know there are paints out there that claim to be a one coat coverage. Don't believe it always two coats. So just remember the order that you paint is you want to do a cut in coat first, let it dry, then roll, let it dry, then cut in again, let it dry, and then roll, let it dry. The only time that you can cut in and roll is if you have two different people and the roller is right behind the cut in person. But for the average person, they're gonna be doing it themselves. Let it dry between coats. If you do not and you get into the tacky stage of, of paint, it's gonna look terrible where you overlap from one to the other. So be patient. It usually takes two to four hours for paint to dry to be recoated. And remember all of the tools that I discussed here are at your local Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards. They're also down in the description from Amazon. And I checked and they're the exact same price between the two. Painting doesn't have to be hard, especially if you follow all of these steps. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.